The Ohio Harness Horsemen's Association presents Freshman Focus. A look at two-year-olds in training across the Buckeye State. Freshman Focus is presented by Eldorado Sayota Downs. Now racing Tuesday through Saturday. First post time, 3.15. By Sugar Valley Farm. Looking for your next quality standard bred racehorse? Look no further than Sugar Valley Farm in Delaware, Ohio. And by the Ohio State Veterinary Medical Center. Caring, down to a science. Now here is your host, Roger Houston. Welcome to another edition of Freshman Focus. Today we're with trainer Chris Beaver at his farm located in Radnor, Ohio, just north of the Delaware County Fairgrounds. And after this message, we'll be back with our sit-down interview with trainer Chris Beaver. Racing is back at El Dorado Scioto Downs. Catch the excitement all summer long. Live racing every Tuesday through Saturday afternoon. First post time is 3.15. Mark your calendar to see the future stars with a $150,000 Next Generation July 4th. Two-year-old trotters and pacers begin their careers in the Next Generation. Horse players earn points with a new Caesars Reward Program. El Dorado Scioto Downs. Live racing is back. Back here on Freshman Focus with trainer Chris Beaver. Well, Chris, uh, last year, undoubtedly, uh, the best year that you've had career-wise. Uh, you specialize in trotters. Is there more money for trotters than pacers? Uh, it's, uh, it's my niche, I guess. It, uh, you know, it's what everybody wants me to train. And, uh, you know, when I can get a good one, we can make a lot more money with them. I find the, the pacers are just too competitive, you know, and you know, you may have a good one and and still get shut out a lot. So I, I tend to focus on the trotters. The 3.1 million that you won last year is the most ever in your racing career, uh, specializing in trotters. It seems like the pacers at the sales go for a lot more money than the trotters. And is that part of your thinking when you uh, go to the sale that you want those trotters that are little less uh, price tag but the chance of making more money with them uh, yeah I think there's a lot more uh, it, it's a lot more competitive trying to buy a, a pacer at the sale mm -hmm. um, there's a lot more people after the same horses mm -hmm. everybody wants the same breeding um, the, the trotters are, are the that's the same case too but you can still go and you know what I found is there's 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 horses that everybody wants mm -hmm. and they're chasing them and then there's there's other really good horses that you know if you just spend a little bit of money, they're in your they're in your range. You know, like I bought a I bought a full brother to my MVP at the sale for forty five thousand last year. That's mostly paid for one, but to me it was a heck of a deal. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, and those are the kind of things I look for. It isn't really the price tag, but to me it's got to be it's got to be a good deal when I buy it. We're going to highlight twelve of your two-year-olds this afternoon. But overall, you got what, 40 two-year-olds? Yeah, there's there's 40 two-year-olds. Uh, How many Ohio breads? Uh, somewhere between 20 and 25. Is that kind of normal to have 25 out of 40 uh, being Ohio breads? Uh, it's as, as many two-year-olds as I've had. And uh, Pretty typical year for Ohio breads. Mm -hmm. You know, we bought a few more uh, dual eligible horses with the Kentucky eligibility mm -hmm. uh, coming on so strong this year, but uh, a pretty typical number of uh, two year old Ohio breads that I'm starting with this year. This year, your two year olds uh, kind of break down to two thirds of them are fillies, a third are the Colts or Geldings. Uh, is it more profitable to have fillies? Well, yeah, I mean, fillies do have some upside on the on the uh, ability to breed them, but that wasn't really the plan. I'd I'd I would assume have an even number mm -hmm. of each, you know, and and have an even number of each in the sire stakes and that kind of thing right on down the line. Um, it turned out that some of the horses were picked up by owners and some were uh, homebreds, you know, and it mm -hmm. just turned out we had more fillies this year than colts. 
So, um, you know, not the plan, but that's the way it turned out. You're known as a trot trainer, but you're not totally a trot trainer. Uh, you got a few pacers as well. Yeah, four, four two-year-olds and, uh, and one older, or one three-year-old yeah. pacer. One thing that's a bit different with trainer Chris Beaver is that uh, most others try them without the hobbles and as they develop a problem, they put the trotting hobbles on. Uh, most generally, you do it the opposite way, trotting hobbles first, and if they progress well, might take them off. Uh, well, some of them, if they're not fine in their gait. Mm -hmm. You know, I found, uh, one thing I found interesting, um, you know, we can train horses all winter long in Florida and they're, they're fine down there on the, on the clay track, but when I bring them home, uh, sometimes I just got to throw the hobbles on a little while just to get them focused. Mm -hmm. You know, some of them I can take them back off if they don't need them. But, you know, the big thing with hobbles for me, and especially on my Ohio breads, is, you know, the drivers are not taking prisoners out there. They're not babying these horses around the track. If, I, if I'm out here training and they're making mistakes for my guys, even though this is a tough track to, to maneuver, if they're out here making mistakes for my guys, trying to hold them together or whatever, they are gonna need hobbles when the catch drivers are putting them on the gate and launching them off of it mm -hmm. into the first turn at Northfield Park. That's just, to me, that's, you know, that's a no-brainer. Okay. How much have you been with your two-year-olds this season? Uh, we've trained a bunch of them around 215 here mm -hmm. at the farm. Uh, when I take them up to Delaware, they'll go probably seven or eight off of that. Uh, it's a big, big jump for them going up. A big, big boost for the horses when they go up there. Last year, uh, no race bikes when we were here at the farm, but I noticed today in the second trips, uh, the horses were hitched to race bikes. Is it later in the season or the fact that uh, uh, you're not going to Delaware as early? Well, I, is this the same week we did as last year? Or? It's close. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I've probably delayed a little bit and it comes down to, to less help, mm -hmm. you know, and trying to get a little further here before I, I head up there. But we are, we've reached We've reached the limit of what we can do with a good part of them mm -hmm. here, and next week we'll be going up to the fairgrounds. It's just, it's a lot more work, a lot harder on my help, and and help is hard to come by right now as it is. Also, I would guess it makes for a longer day, too. Oh, for sure, you know, we'll start work, we'll work till two or three in the afternoon training when we start going up to the fairgrounds. Here at your farm, you've got numerous paddocks out in the infield, uh, the racetrack around it. Uh, does that kind of get the horses all stirred up that are turned out? Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They like it. They they go out there and run with the horses right as they're going by. Mm -hmm. that's, that's just part of it. Uh, now the horses you train today, will they have the the day off tomorrow? Yes. Okay. You got your own track out here, so you have to have water and hair and things like that to, to manage your racing surface. Yeah, yeah. We. Um, you know, my second trainer, Henry Troyer, he really likes to work the racetrack. Uh, he puts a lot of water on it now this time of year. Um, we don't usually have to put water on it in the spring, but uh, now that it's drying up, uh, you know, we, and, you know, it, it takes, takes work, takes a lot of time. He'll, he'll set up water and I'll, I'll water it at night too, just to make sure that it's, it's not dry in the morning. So. Now, last year, uh, I think we featured 10, maybe 11 or 12 horses, but uh, those ones we featured last year had at least, what was it, eight of them had real good racing seasons for you. Yeah, well, it's, uh, you know, I, I would say that I, I missed a few, you know, like the Mighty Hill was not training well, you know, through the spring last year, and he came mm -hmm. on and made 270,000 last year. I did not have him in the group, but I, I believe that, you know, I, I had uh, 10 three-year-olds in the Sire Stakes last week and eight of them were on the freshman focus. So I don't think we were completely off, you know, mm -hmm. when we were going through them last year. Now, this season of the 12 that we're featuring, four are by Triumphant Caviar and four are what the hills. Are those the dominant stallions for your two-year-olds? I always have a lot of uh, Triumphant Caviars because I own the stud and he's done so well for me. Um, 
and you know I, I know how to assess them you know I can tell by the way they're training which ones I think are going to be nice horses uh, the what the hills I bought a lot of them because they had value last year there was there were a lot of them selling a lot of them out of good mares and you know I, overall people were down on them so that helped me buy them uh, more affordably this year your other four horses are uh, credit fashion long tom and break the bank k and the pacer beach tree out of tailwind hanover by art major but you put her as uh, one of your top ones this year maybe well you know i i can tell you i have got no idea <laughs> you know how good she's gonna be but she couldn't be doing any better right now. <laughs> I'd like to thank Chris Beaver for sitting down with us and talking a few minutes about his uh, young horses and his stable in 2022. We're gonna move into the barns now and take a closer look at the 12 horses that are featured on Freshman Focus this season out of the Chris Beaver operation. We'll be back with those, uh, look at those horses close up after this message. Your animals provide unconditional love. When they hurt, you want the best care available to help them enjoy life again. The Ohio State Veterinary Medical Center is here for you and for them. From heart disease to cancer, diabetes to broken bones, and 24-hour emergency services, Ohio State's team of experts make a difference in the lives of animals and the family members who love them. The Ohio State Veterinary Medical Center. Looking for your next champion? Look no further than Sugar Valley Farm in Delaware, Ohio. Sugar Valley's lineup of stallions include world champion Down by the Seaside, Lather Up, the fastest horse in harness racing history, Little Brown Jug Champion, Well Said, Catch the Fire, Marseille, plus the newest stallion of the Sugar Valley lineup, Mission Accepted, and returning to Sugar Valley Farm, Creatine. Sugar Valley Farm, the home of champions. Welcome back to Freshman Focus with trainer Chris Beaver. Well, Chris, this is a Philly Trotter Chulata by Watt the Hill out of Chula by Majestic Sun. Seems like uh, that breeding goes back to the next generation, I believe, a couple years back. Well, last year, uh, Chula like won it last year, yeah. and he's a full brother to this Philly. How's she been doing? So far, so good. I've trained her in 15 at the, on this track, and uh, uh, we'll be going up to the fairgrounds next week. Uh, she's got lots of go to her. That's the main thing, you know, a little, little rough in the turns, but here, but she'll be much better on the big track. A lot of the horses you own a piece of, but you don't own any of the, uh, this Chulata. No, uh, Miss Philly was uh, bought back out of the sale by the owner, I believe Buckstone mm -hmm. Farms. And uh, he sent, him, sent her up to me uh, uh, about November mm -hmm. to train. Now, of the 12 that we got today, I noticed I think eight of them are fillies. Uh, any of your fillies are dominant this year, maybe? Well, yeah, I, I got a lot of them sent to me, fillies. Yeah. 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 So this is Chilada by What the Hill. This filly is Aquatica by Break the Bank K out of Aqua Marina K by Donato Hanover. Aquatica is one of those uh, that you train today. Mm hmm. What you wanted out over? Oh yeah, well she's uh, she's been a hothead and we've been doing our best to manage her right from the start. Um, she was uh, picked out from uh, Bob Key's uh, farm by a couple of my owners, Lance and Larry Bayless. Mm -hmm. And uh, they bought a slot in the next generation for her because she's very, very game, very aggressive and very natural. Um, the whole question is, you know, will she stay together or get crazy, you know, but she trained great today. So. If you get that spot, do you think uh, she'll make the next generation? She sure acts like she, she'll be there right now, mm. but uh, you know, we'll see. Uh, who are the owners on this one? That's uh, Lance and Larry Bayless. Yes. Oh, the brothers. Yeah, they bought her at the Bob Key uh, yeah. uh, when, when they dispersed his horses. Yeah. When he passed away, uh, the horses they had, they uh, mm -hmm. invited people to come to the farm, look at them, and right. this, this is, is how one you of picked them. up a quality. Yeah. You remember what they had to pay for? Or? It wasn't very much. I'm thinking yeah. between eight and 10,000. I ended up buying part of her. Yeah. I think it was maybe 10,000 they paid for. Is she a small filly? 
No, not at all. She's she's tall, rangy, a little mm -hmm. bit light bodied, mm -hmm. but not small. No. Aquatic. Okay. Well, they just great. look small next to me. <laughs> well, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Uh, uh, as tall as you are, but I guess you're stepping down a bit, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Aquatica by Break the Bank K. This is Buckeye Hill, a trotting colt by What the Hill out of California Love by Storm and Norman. And uh, this one, uh, uh, still a, a colt. Uh, seems like most of them are geldings that you have, but she's, <laughs> right. he's still a colt. My vet says the only stud in the barn should be the trainer, but uh, this horse hasn't given me any reason to, to cut him yet. Yeah. Um, he is out of a mare I trained named California Love. Mm -hmm. who is out of a family that I've dealt with quite a bit. She's a sister to a horse named uh, Buckeye Boss, who was mm -hmm. a very good sire steak horse. His mom was a good sire steak horse at three and uh, very good gated. So we kept her and uh, I um, worked with uh, Double Spring Farm. We bred her to what the hell and I ended up buying him back out of the sale because I liked him goes back to Storm and Norman, and uh, mm -hmm. I don't remember too many Storm and Normans in the bloodlines of the horses you've had in the past. I, I've trained some of them because I've been linked up with uh, Abbey Stables, mm -hmm. and we've had some horses from them, some Storm and Normans. Um, and he actually, you know, there's a horse probably should have been a good sire. He, he was a very high percentage sire, just did not get a lot of opportunity. This one's got a very appropriate name, uh, being the Buckeye Hill, the Buckeye State, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, Charlie Hill, one of the stalwarts here in the state of Ohio for so many years, uh, certainly loved the name. Uh, think he'll live up to the, the breeding and the name? Well, I've, I've thought highly of him so far. Um, you know, what the hell I've, I've thought highly of right along. He hasn't really lived up to expectations so far for people, but, uh, you know, this horse, I started staking him to the Wellwood and the Breeders' Crown, mm -hmm. and I kept right on going because he's given me no reason to think otherwise. So definitely, so. this is one you want to make. Yeah, <laughs> yep. yep. This is the Buckeye Hill by What the Hill. This is a two-year-old Philly trotter. What Up G by Triumphant Caviar. G. G. O'Keefe out of mm -hmm. uh, Donato Hanover. That mare of this one, uh, Geo Keefe's got a three-year-old this year. Yeah, yeah, full brother, Caviar Gold. Yeah, doing quite well. Yep. <laughs> yep. Now you trained Caviar Gold. You got this out of the same mare. Uh, what's up, G? Any similar traits? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, she, they're one. He trained down without hobbles, and she has so far too, and that's kind of rare for a triumphant caviar. Mm -hmm in my barn. She's very good gated. Um, she uh, is a little more aggressive than he was, you know, but you know, almost, almost identical in the way they trained down in the sense that, you know, where, where he would have a little problem, she would too, you yeah. know. You, you used the word aggressive a couple times already. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not all bad, is it? No, especially in Ohio, but you know, you're walking a fine line. You want, mm -hmm. you want them to you want them to go and you you want them to be okay with being on the front end but uh, you don't want them running off you don't want them getting mad and mm -hmm. making breaks because they're, they're mad at the driver or the situation so. some of your young horses uh, do they get out of that aggressive state or is there much change in them when once they get in behind the gate and get to actually racing in full competition do they change much uh, I, you know, I, I always think they tend to get more aggressive as they go, you know, but we can always, you know, two-year-olds, it's a battle, you know, by, by the time they're at the end of their two-year-old year, they're all, they're all aggressive if they're still racing, they're, they're sore, you know, they're just, they're trying to keep it together and you're trying to keep them together. We take them down to Florida, reset them, and usually they're much calmer, more relaxed you know, after they get through the winter training down there. Did you have men behind the gate a couple times in Florida or up here yet? I haven't had my two-year-olds on the gate at all yet, yeah. but we do have an equisizer, so they're used to being on a gate, you mm -hmm. know, and I've had very few problems with them on gates. This is What's Up G by Triumphant Caviar. 
This is a gelding trotter, Sunrise Hill, by Watt the Hill, out of Sunrise Nibbles by Iron Duke. And uh, already a gelding, did he give you some problems? <laughs> yeah, he, he was wild from the day he walked in the door, and he didn't stay a stud for very long. He's out of a um, mare that I won the Sire Stakes final with the first year I was training in Ohio, uh, Sunrise Nibbles. And she hasn't really produced for us yet the first couple, so I, I cut him right away. And, He's been uh, he's been good <laughs> as a gelding. So. You mentioned the first one you trained in Ohio. Uh, you trained also what in Canada? Yeah, I was up in Canada for about eight years mm -hmm. racing. And uh, when the first year that the um, the slot money come in and really got things going here in the sire stakes, uh, I bought one Ohio bred filly. Mm -hmm. and that was Sunrise Nibbles, and. Uh, from there, it's gone up. <laughs> so, so thanks to slot money, yep. brought uh, Chris Beaver back to the Buckeye State. Right, right. Yeah, I was, uh, you know, we had decided to move home anyway. So it was, it turned out to be a really uh, just a very good coincidence that everything worked out like it did. I noticed uh, most of the ones we've looked at here today are very calm when, you, when you're when you around them. They're not fighting you a bit to get the right. picture taken. <laughs> Right, yeah, well, they're, they, a lot of them train today, so they're, mm -hmm. they're a little tired, too. <laughs> yeah. Got them on a quiet day, huh? Yeah, yeah. This is Sunrise Hill by What the Hill. This is a Philly Trotter, Context Fashion, by Credit Fashion, out of Contact, by High Tech. Uh, I'm not familiar with the mayor Contact. Um, well, yeah, I just, uh, um, Martin Yoder uh, picked this filly out of the um, uh, blood at horse sale early, the August one, and uh, I had seen the video, and uh, this filly could really trot in the video, and uh, I believe Context is um, by a sire named High Tech, yeah, I believe, high tech. Uh, which is a, uh, BJ's Mac, maybe, it's, it's a little bit of an odd family, but it seems to work, she's uh, very quick. She's kind of a little filly. Yeah. yeah. Was, she, was she a late filly, or do you know? I don't believe so. No, I think she's just small, but uh, she hasn't seemed to t fatigue at all on the racetrack. She's very strong on the track. Trotting hobbles? Yes. Yep. Were you having problems with her? Or she yeah, just... She's a little bit high strung, so she just get a little mad sometimes and do stupid stuff. But, uh, you know, I don't mind that. Do the horses change when you go like to the Delaware County Fairgrounds to train uh, attitude wise uh, on a different track and such is there much change you know well the first time we go you know they're gonna see a lot but they also uh, have a much easier time getting around mm -hmm. the track you know once they get accustomed to it they they drop right down you know you know it doesn't take long to get them ready to race when we co go from here to there there's a lot yeah. more hustle bustle though at delaware on the half mile track there than you mm -hmm. have around here at your farm yeah you know there is but uh you know when we take them out in the race bike here they know it's time to go and they're yeah. they're uh they're, prim they're primed and ready to go anyway so you know all that other stuff doesn't doesn't change them too much this is the philly trotter Context Fashion by Credit Fashion. This is the, the pacer that we're going to take a look at, a Philly pacer by Wonderful Beach by Beach Tree out of Tailwind Hanover by Art Major. And I was impressed by her and her training effort out there today. Yeah, I have been too. She's done absolutely nothing wrong, and I can tell she's just loafing right now. She isn't even trying. So. Got a lot of size to her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, she was, uh, you know, that's one reason we bought her was, her, you know, she she looked impressive to me physically when I'm when I went and looked at her, um, you know, and I I can't afford to spend a lot on pacers because I just don't have a lot of people mm -hmm. after them, you know. So instead, I was trying to trying to find some family in the back, a good looking horse, an athletic horse on the video and mm -hmm. stay away from popular stallions, you know. Well, it's kind of carried over from the video to the training we saw this morning because I got a feeling you got some mighty high hopes for her. Well, you know, I didn't didn't stake outside of Ohio with her, but I do I do think she is a, a really nice horse, you know, and you know I guess it remains to be seen. <laughs> but you know, now, really, Chris, you don't have to stake them outside of Ohio to have a really good one. No, 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 absolutely not. You can make a lot of money here in the Buckeye State. Yeah, yeah. 
This is the two-year-old filly, Wonderful Beach. This is Sister Charlie, a filly trotter by Long Tom out of Jane Eyre, uh, Groton Hall. Is this the only Long Tom that you got in your barn? Yes, um, and I didn't actually um, buy her a partner of mine, Jim Belisak. Uh, bought her out of the sale and uh, got her broke and sent her down to me. Do those that buy them uh, out of the sale, do they talk to you beforehand or? Um, you know, most of the time I, I partner up with people when we buy horses. Uh, either I buy them and then sell them later or, um, you know, someone will have me look at a horse for them or whatever. Um, Jim bought these on his, his own, you know, on, uh, Sister Charlie just jogged today, but how's she been training? She's training well, you know, she's been in 215 like the others now, mm -hmm. and uh, I was real happy with how she had been training. Um, got pretty far down without the hobbles. We ended up putting the hobbles on her yesterday, and, and she, she went really well. Is 215 about where you want to be this year at this time? Oh yeah, I mean it gets me gets me under 210 when I go to the fairgrounds. So I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied with that. So. Your track here. Uh, today, you, most of them are around that 215 mark. What would that uh, work out to be at Delaware, in your opinion? Oh, I think, think uh, you know, once they're, they've been around it and know what's going on, I, they should go in seven or eight, no problem from here. Yeah, it's usually, usually a seven or eight second difference, you know. This is Sister Charlie by Long Tom. This is another one of your What the Hills. This is the gelding Vondell Kemp out of the mare Aiken for Clay by Conway Hall. Vondell Kemp, uh, what the hill trotter, uh, looks pretty good out there today. Yeah, yeah, he's coming along good. Um, actually, this horse uh, was purchased um, by uh, Ben Taylor, Taylor Made Farms, mm -hmm. his first standard breads that I know of that they bought, and, uh, but they own part of what the hill and uh, Kevin Greenfield recommended that they get a hold of me because they were looking to maybe buy a couple of them. So uh, uh, this is a dual eligible horse I bought down in Lexington. And so were I'm hopefully- Were you around What the Hill when he was racing very much? Uh, no, not at all really. I mean, I saw him race, but- What no. about, do, do they all have a common trait to them? Uh, they, have a, they have a body type mm -hmm. uh, they tend to be uh, uh, a little bit uh, shorter legged, stocky, you know. They're not, they're not the type of horse that people are usually looking for in the sale, like body-wise. I don't mind it because I know, you know, like the dam is, uh, his, his dam is uh, related to Majestic Sun, you know, and a lot of that breeding, they look the same, same way, so. Now we mentioned that he's a gelding. Do mm -hmm. you usually geld a bunch of them at a certain time of the season? Uh, I may geld a few early if they're really bad when they come in. Now, this horse, he did stay a stud for a while, but he became uh, a little bit, I, I, I kind of thought maybe his testicles were bothering him on the racetrack, and that's the reason that we cut him. This is Vondell Kemp by What the Hill. This is the Gelding at Dumbo Boy by Triumphant Caviar of Nessa Rose by Chip Chip Hooray. Uh, this is one that B.J. Roberts took the first trip, but you sat behind him the second trip. Is there a reason for that? Uh, actually, Henry Troyer took her this one the first trip, but uh, I, I tend to move around and try to take as many as I possibly can, you know, and then I'll typically take the horse I plan to cut the mile with the last trip. I like to be in control of the fractions and, and set up everything in the mile like I want it. So. If you stay with the horse throughout, does that mean they're having a problem though? Uh, it may, but not necessarily. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can you tell horses problems when you're out on the track with somebody else sitting behind them? Can you see the problem usually? Sometimes, you know, but I have to trust my help to um, to let me know when something isn't right, too, you know, because a lot of the time you feel it in the mouth, you know, which line they're grabbing, uh, you know, but you're also looking at, you know, how they're hitting the ground, you know. You know, we won't be out there training if they got a wicked head nod to them or something like that, but you're also looking for them to be a little out of rhythm 
are on a line and sometimes you have to do I have to depend on my help to let me know when something like that's going on. Good help is so important. Oh, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and you, um, it, it's harder now than ever to get good help. And it's not just the second trainers, though. It goes down to the caretakers. Oh, all the way. Yeah, all the way down. Yeah, you need good help. Yelling all these triumphant caviars. Will there ever be another triumphant caviar for... Chris Beaver? I've been trying. I, you know, I, Caviar Gold, uh, I left him a stud as a two-year-old and, um, you know, he, he had kind of a sulky attitude, so I decided to cut him after his two-year-old year, you know, and, you know, again, like winning ticket, it was the same story. He was a stud as a two-year-old and then uh, we cut him and he won almost everything at three, so it's you know, you have to weigh it out. If I had the right one, I'd definitely leave him a stud, but it hasn't it hasn't worked out yet. So. Is he right along with the others speed-wise? He's, uh, yeah, yeah. He's, he actually trained in 14 today and very strong doing it. I had to actually take a hold and just wait, you know, because he, he's, uh, he's a strong colt. He's got a really good wind to him. He wouldn't have blown out a match after he trained when, today. When so. you take a hold of him, do they usually settle down or do you have to fight them? Oh yeah, I can, uh, you know, most of them we can bring them back and ease them back, you know, no problem. This is Domovoy by Triumphant Caviar. This is the Philly Trotter Cali Red by Triumphant Caviar by Red Storm out of Storm and Norman. And uh, real quick, I'll mention you got toe weights on this one. What was the problem? Uh, sometimes I just throw in a little extra weight if they're acting pacey to me. I'll I'll throw a little bit of extra weight with toe weights on them. I think we, last year we've seen a couple. Well, I think you were the only trainer that had anyone with toe weights on last year, but I think right. uh, Mike Sweeney's got a trotter. He's got toe weights, but toe yeah. weights are almost a thing of the past. Right. I, I still use them quite a bit. You know, although um, the only problem with them, sometimes they lose them and then they're unbalanced, you know, until you get them put back on. But uh, yeah. This Philly Cali Red, uh, Looks good out there training today. Has she been that way all along? Yeah, this is another one owned by uh, two of them here today are uh, ones that were raised by Sandra Burnett. Oh, okay. And uh, she always sends me good horses, you know, and I end up buying part of them. And uh, I had the dam of this one, Red Storm, was a real nice sire stakes filly. Another Storm and Norman mare. Mm -hmm. um, and she was an absolute natural, as nice as, nice as one can trot. Uh, did not wear hobbles. Uh, this filly got more of the Triumph and Caviar in her, and she needs needs the hobbles to kind of steady her. But but really, just a great attitude on the racetrack. She wants to go, but you know you can you can train her anywhere you want to. I know it's a long time to uh, the Sire Stakes and the Buckeye Stallion Series. Uh, do you have high hopes for Mall to be uh, in the Sire Stakes, or do you already know some of them are not going to make it to the top round? Um, I, at this point, you know, I still think most of them have the potential to be Sire Stake horses. You know, everything that I that I uh, brought to you today, I would think has that potential. Um, and there's probably some that I didn't bring as well. You know, I I like to. I like to go heavy towards the sire stakes because I think that's where the money can be made, and you know I like to keep keep the you know a good number of divisions. You know, I'll do my part to you know when we get down to one or two divisions, it's not as exciting. You know. Do you ever have one that started out on the county fairs and made it up, uh, went up the ladder for you? Well, I always try to start them up where I think they belong, but you know I've had some end up down in the you know racing in the county at Mighty Hill. For example, raced several county fairs last year, and then he won the Sire Stakes final. So. This is Cali Red by the Triumphant Caviar. This is Gabby's Teddy Bear, a Philly Trotter by Triumphant Caviar. I love Gabby's credit card by Credit Winner, and her four, full sister's doing quite well this season. Yeah, and yep, and last year too. Yeah, yeah. she's been uh, she's been a really good <laughs> a horse for us, and. Uh, she also had uh, Gabby's Loose Change was another sister who uh, made quite a bit of money in the sire stakes. Do they all have a similar trait? Um, well, they've been determined so far, the mm -hmm. fillies out of that mare have been very determined. 
uh, they're, they're a little bit, the first two are a little bit foul gated. Um, this filly has been very good gated. She's the only one on the list that uh, came up from Florida. Um, she was down there with my dad all winter, this filly. He, he has that family and he, he breaks and trains them all at two and then they come up here. How old is Charlie? Uh, he, he's 73, I believe. 73 and mm -hmm. still going pretty good. Yeah, yeah, he trains all winter, you know, and then takes yeah. the summer off. Yeah. yeah. Glad to hear it. Yeah. Uh, back when you were racing Canada, he had a full-fledged stable here in the Buckeye State. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, up until maybe seven, eight years ago, he yeah. was training, yeah. yeah. This is Gabby's teddy bear, full sister, the Gabby's C-Note. We'd like to thank the second trainers and the caretakers and of course trainer Chris Beaver for giving us their valuable time today for this edition of Freshman Focus. Next week coming up on Freshman Focus, it's trainer Todd Luther from the Delaware County Fairgrounds. Join us again next Thursday night at 7 p.m. for Freshman Focus. This has been Freshman Focus, a look at two-year-olds in training across the Buckeye State. Freshman Focus is presented by Eldorado Sayota Downs, now racing Tuesday through Saturday, first post time, 315, by Sugar Valley Farm. Looking for your next quality standard bred racehorse? Look no further than Sugar Valley Farm in Delaware, Ohio. And by the Ohio State Veterinary Medical Center, caring down to a science. Freshman Focus is a presentation of the Ohio Harness Horsemen's Association.